Welcome to this online lesson on linings and interlinings. These come under the category of trims and accessories. The shape of the garment is enhanced and preserved by these underlying fabrics which include interfacings, linings, underlinings and interlinings. For example, you can line a silk blouse with a cotton fabric thus protecting it from the harsh effects of body perspiration. You can use shoulder pads to make the shoulder look wider. The main outer fabric from which a garment is made is called as the body, fashion or the shell fabric. Underlying fabrics or the supporting fabrics are inside of the garment. They lend support to the garment and they also help maintain the shape of the garment. Terms like interfacing, lining, interlining and underlining are used loosely these days. Interlining is also called as interfacing and lining is also called as underlining. Here you can see a picture of a fusible interlining. So what do you mean by that? It means that when you touch the back side of the fusible interlining with the back side, that means wrong side of the fabric, and then you apply steam press on it, the interlining adheres permanently to the back side of the fabric. How does this happen? This happens because the wrong side of the fusible interlining is coated with a thermoplastic resin. Typically in high-end kutor garments, you may find that all the cut and sew parts of the garment has a woven polyester fused interlining. Sometimes these are also called as core fuse material. So the one that you see here is usually used in high-end gowns and silk blouses. Interlining is a separate layer of fabric or a fabric construction between the lining and the fashion fabric. So an interlining material is never hanging loose. It's stuck to the wrong side of the garment. It adds warmth. The same lining pattern is used to cut the interlining. In case of foam, fleece or felt type fabric that adds some bulk, lining would have to be larger to accommodate the interlining. Interlining does not take the place of interfacing. Interfacing is a supporting fabric used in almost all garments. Interfacing lends body, shape and reinforcement to limited areas. Like for example, in an Indian sari blouse, interfacing is used in the midriff yoke. Collars, collar bands, cuffs, button stands, selva bottoms, Waistbands, midriff yokes are usually interfaced. In tailored coats and jackets, the shoulders, the labels are interfaced with microdot fusible. If fusible interfacing is used, one fabric ply will feel significantly stiffer than the other. These are some of the varieties of interfacing that are available in the market. Non-woven interfacing. This is the most commonly used interfacing. Like for example, paper canvas or microdot fusible interfacing are examples of non-woven interfacing. This interfacing can be fusible, made to be used in facings as in paper canvas or to be used in jackets and waistcoats and are called as microdot fusible. Woven interfacing this interfacing has grain lengthwise and crosswise and is made out of cotton fabric. It is very stiff by nature. It should be cut on the same grain as the fabric you will be attaching it to. This canvas is very thick and used in waistbands, cuffs, collars, the bottoms of lehenga facings and the selvar bottoms. Knit interfacing this interfacing is also called as tricot fusible and can have a four-way stretch. This is specifically used for finishing stretch garments neatly and used as neck facing or other facing pieces. So here you can see pictures of common examples of different kinds of interfacing. This is a double-sided fusible which has the synthetic resin on both sides. This is commonly used to finish hem lines in case you don't want to do hem stitch. Here you can see an example of non-woven paper canvas. 
This is used to shape necklines in neckline facings and bottom facings. This is a picture of micro dot fusible. This can be used in place of polyester woven interlining in jackets. Here you can see an example of woven fabric canvas. What is lining? Lining is nearly a replica of the garment. This picture shows the denim jacket lined with an other texture of fabric. Lining is nearly, as I said earlier, a duplicate of the garment. It is sewn inside the garment with seam allowances reversed to provide a finished inside appearance. So this kind of a garment looks beautiful inside and outside. A lining covers the garment's seam allowances making the inside attractive when the garment is taken off makes seam finishes minimal or unnecessary. That means these kind of seams do not need overlocking. What is underlining? Underlining involves lining each major piece of the garment individually. Here in this picture you can see that the main printed fabric is totally underlined with this white fabric. This is not to be confused with interlining. Underlining unlike lining prevents the seam allowances and other construction details from showing through the outside of the garments in case the garment is made out of a sheer fabric like lace or organza. Supporting devices are incorporated into garments to retain the shape of the garment and provide the fashion a correct silhouette and these include shoulder pads, chest pieces, sleeve heads, bra cups, bonings, hoops, puzzles, horsehair braid and other ways.